Alright, let's start the lesson on ion exchange. Um, I discussed in the text that ion exchange is somewhat similar to surface complexation, but then you have multiple cations. And these cations have different affinity to the solid surface, so um, essentially they are competing with each other. Each, each other. And the one with high affinity and higher concentration in the water phase, it ends up to have more on the solid phase. So um, if you look at the, the KEQ values or the different, um, you can get kind of more or less a sense of their relative affinity. But also if you have more one particular species and more have high concentration in the water, it also ends up to be more on the solid phase because it has high concentration. If you write the KEQ values, in order to get that KEQ, you need a higher corresponding solid phase concentration. So let's look at example. Actually, this really should be 4.1, not 3.1. OK, so let's go through this example, and we'll, we'll talk about how to set it up. Um, this example, I'm kind of thinking about must as shear water, produced water, or flow back water, and you have some concentration. We know there are a lot of different cations in the in the these type of water. Um, so I'm giving you a typical composition of mass as shear water um, with high sodium, chloride, calcium, but you also have barium, strontium. Actually, the barium strontium concentration is relatively low in this, uh, what you have here. Um, so we are here, um, and, and uh, I'm giving you both con ppm and uh, more per kilogram water. Actually, both of them you can put in directly, so it's your choice. Now, um, I'm saying you have a 3,000 milliliter, a batch reactor of 300 milliliter. And this water is in equilibrium with partial pressure of CO2, which is this is atmospheric concentration of CO2. Try to simulate the condition in, in soil. And then um, I'm giving you this table that essentially can document the K value for each, um, each uh, reaction process. Now the question I'm asking you the first is, Without any aqueous complexation reaction, so you are not going to put, you're going, to, you're still going to put OH minus, uh, carbonate and all that, but you are not going to put, for example, calcium chloride, uh, calcium OH plus, and all these secondary species. Um, I'm asking you to see, okay, with the how much is up on the exchange side, how much is up on the. Um, and what is the percentage of the absorption on the exchange sites compared to the, its original total concentration? Essentially, I'm asking you to make a table for each major cation and list an uh, uh, aqueous um, concentration column and list another exchange site column and then and compare different species. But also calculate the percentage of the ones that are on the exchange side because they all start with different aqueous concentration. So comparing the absolute value sometimes does not tell a lot of things. Um, so you need to normalize them to the original total concentration. But then you also I also want you to look at um, on the exchange side, how much is occupied by um, each of these cation. It's how much is sodium, how much calcium, how much is barium strontium, etc. So that's the first question. And then the second question is running the simulation with um, speciation or complexation reactions. Leads to the formation of chloride species and O2 minus species, all these listed here. Um, and then I'm asking you to answer the same question. So comparing one and two, essentially, you getting some information about how important are these aqueous complexation. Does that aqueous complexation help or not helping these uh, cation to go on the surface side? So le let's look at the, uh, let's start doing this. 
um, we had a discussion today, and then you are saying, okay, maybe you can start with a blank one. So today I'm going to start with a with a blank equus species uh, equus um, equ uh, I'm sorry, blank input file. Essentially, there's not much information there, except that um, you will be doing like all the runtime uh, parameters are there, and I also put a bit of output uh, file, uh, output uh, keyword uh, specification there. I put two um, spatial profile time points, so it will be running into 100 minutes. Um, and then initial condition, it, this is already specified, but we will specify initial condition later. Okay, so well, let's go through each grid block, uh, keyword block. First one is discretization. This one here, you essentially would specify um, the size, and we know it's one grid block, right? So you will be doing, first of all, you need to kind of put in the dis dist your units for length. And uh, we talk about this is 300 milliliter. So if you want to put um, centimeters or, or meters, that's fine. Last time we put centimeters, so let's this time maybe we're just putting meters to have some variation. So the distance units will be meters. And then before we always specify X zones, right? You essentially only have one um, species. So that will give you, um, let me see, you will specify one zone and then because it's 300 millimeter, milliliter, so that's 300 centimeter cube and converting to meters would be 3 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cube, right? So I, I mentioned before this is essentially when we do this, um, we we specify we specify that this is essentially the length of x zone, but by default you actually have y zone and z zone, and the code is going to assume in that in these other two directions that you don't specify, it's going to one meter and one meter. So here you have um, specified point zero zero three meters. So essentially your volume is zero point zero 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 three cubic meter which is 300 mil millimeter, milliliter, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's here now you specify the concentration of, um, you specify essentially the, the size of your system. Now we probably can try this now, just to be sure that you are not making any mistake in this block. I always think it's a good practice to input one by one and after e every uh, each um, keyword block you kind of check if everything is correct. Uh, you didn't make any wrong mistakes or whatever in the input file. Okay, so because we, okay, so the, the top one is reading right, but because we didn't specify any condition, then it doesn't know what to do. That's okay. It, at least it didn't give uh, me um, anything about, um, like, it's not specified correct or something like that. So let's do that again. Let's continue. All right, so let's specify primary species, and for that we need to look at our table. So always put H plus first. I mentioned that before, probably multiple times, but uh, it's worth to mention again. Always put H plus. And we know we have CO2AQ, right? 
So we put CO2. So essentially, you follow that table. CO2 EQ, and it says CO2 um, the system is in equilibrium with um, CO2 gas. So you, you will need to put CO2 EQ, and then CO2. OK, now actually you don't need because it's just primate species. And then you'll be putting all the different species, like sodium, just for the list. Uh, cadmium. Potassium. Magnesium. Barium. Strontium. And chloride. That's your primary species on the table. But remember that we also have um, kaolinite. And I mentioned that for each mineral you put, so later on we'll put, put uh, kaolinite in the mineral block. But remember that if, in order to for it to work, for the mineral you will need um, to look up what this mineral is made up of, right? So let's look through. Notepad. Okay, so let's search for kaolinite. Let's see what it composed of. Okay, so kaolinite coming up. You have H plus. You already have. You have aluminum. Right. You have aluminum. You have silica. SiO two AQ H two O. Doesn't need to be there. So essentially, it's aluminum silica. Right, so that means we need to because aluminum silica is not there on the list. So let's put these two in, so we don't get messed up. All right, so you would have aluminum, and then you have SiO two, Aq. So these are species we we can think about it right. Now. Okay, so that's a primary species list. Now let's. I'm saying that we don't put any second uh, species like the chloride or each species, but we still need to put OH minus in because you can't do anything without OH minus because that's a water dissociation association. And then you also have CO two species, so you have to have bicarbonate and carbonate species. Okay, so these are the um, main species that you will have to complete. Okay, now, okay, so that's a second species. And gases, do we have gases? We do because we have a CO2 AQ that is in equilibrium with gas, so you do need a CO2 gas phase. And then You have I exchange. So this is a new a new keyword block. We learned this in this unit. So the key um, here is exchange. The keyword exchange. Oh, I shouldn't do it in Word. It's crazy. Okay. And then um, I'm going to give it a name, which is. X representing surface species, but this one is on kaolinite. So let's do this. Let's call that. Um, and this is on the mineral kaolinite. Right? So essentially, you, you put the exchange at the keyword block and name of the surface site, exchange site, and then the name of the mineral. But also, you, the other thing you need to specify is what convention are you using for the calculation. We, we talk about three different 
like Venslow against Thomas, for example. And let's hear, let's do Venslow. Venslow is the one the most commonly used um, convention. So, okay, so that's Einstein. So this keyword brag is um, somewhat new, and you will need to think about, okay, um, doing that. Uh, your, your folks will be here. But again, here you have the Keolinite, and you need to put in the mineral Keolinite there, the name there. Um, if it's a mineral dissolution precipitation, you would need to put in like kinetic information, for example, dissolution rates and everything. But here we are not really looking at the dissolution precipitation Keolinite, so you can just specify Keolinite. Okay, so these are all the kind of building blocks of your system, chemistry building block of your system. And now we are going to specify what condition we have. And again, we are looking at, uh, let's see, the table we have. The table three. Okay, so you, let's just copy the species from aqueous, the species we had before. And we copy it, and then we will add whatever constitution they need to be. All right. Um, we probably should have units first. Actually, all we all we need to spec and condition we all need to specify units. And um, this would let's say do ppm, and we can do temperature. And let's always do temperature which is 25.0 and H plus you can specify H plus um, but in this table I'm giving you 7.02 so it's easier to do just pH which would be 7.02 and you have CO2 AQ we discussed last time in last lesson you can specify the CO2 concentration with um, gas phase in this way when you have a specific partial pressure of that gas E minus 4 okay so that's for CO2 and then we have sodium which is 7900.0 0. 0. cesium 277.0 and then you have potassium, 82, 82.5. I always think it's good to line up and make it neat and clean, because if you're not clean and line up and all that, it's very easy to make mistakes. It's almost like when you write code, you want to keep it very clean and organized so that that minimize the chance of making mistakes. Um, and when you check, it's easier to see, so um, it's, it's, it's worth the effort. 6.5, and chloride will be doing that with charge. Okay, so you ju just put a charge there. How do I know that this is going to be negative charge, uh, positive charge without this. You can try um, data base sweep first if you want. Um, but I kind of know, because I know there's a lot of cations there, you have to, you see there's a lot of cation um, there, but there's um, almost the only species for now will be chloride and OH minus, right? And pH, you know, is 7, so OH will be 10 to the minus 7 or something, so it must be positive charged. And then we don't really have much of the um, aluminum, but we can put, uh, for example, let's say we did before with this small concentration, just to represent it's there. Okay, silica. Okay, so these are the uh, primary species, these are total concentration of primary species. Now I need to, so in the beaker, 
you have the that's the water phase right composition. But then you also need to specify how much solids is there and um, and how much um, surface area of a solid, how much CEC and all that. Um, so let's say we have volume fraction of the kaolinite is 0 0.005. Okay, I think I didn't specify that in the file. Let's do that. With a sediment with kaolinite being the major, with specific surface area, and okay, that. And then I'll add the Kaolinite occupies 0 0.005 of the total volume. So you can actually calculate that because you have 0 0.005 and then the total country volume is 300 milliliter. That means you have about uh, 1.5 milliliter of the kaolinite. And we should specify the same thing in the input file. So I leave a space line here just to um, to s have the division between the solid phase and aqueous phase. Specialist solid. So kaolinite, first thing you need to specify is 0 0.005 volume fraction. Um, actually, of the solid phase, all these. So essentially, you have um, 0 0.005. Actually, um, so that actually smaller. We started talking about it. we didn't really put a porosity. We actually should put a porosity there. Um, let's finish this mean for a specific surface area. We said it's 13.9 meters square per. per um, so it's volume fraction first on solid face. And then specific surface area is in SSA in meter square per gram. Um, so that's a mineral. But you also need to specify the surface side and, and exchange. So you have XKAO, which is your name that's specified in the exchange. Is this, this need to be consistent with um, the exchange group work. And then you have this keyword CC, which is a specify how much um, cation exchange capacity you have. And we had, uh, um, okay, let's do a bit of calculation here. So it's 100, let me just make some notes here. You have 100.0 M. EQ, sorry, MEQ per kilogram, which is essentially um, is essentially a hundred point zero EQ per gram. And uh, this is equivalent to one point zero E minus two E cube per hundred gram.
and also equivalent to 1.0 e minus 4. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually not right. You have kilogram to gram, and then that's a thousand. And meq to eq is 10 to minus 3. So this is actually 1.0 e minus 4. This is essentially the same as, um, let me check, the units of crunch flow. It's eq per gram, so essentially uh, eq per kilogram. So this will be actually, we should convert to EQ per kilogram, right? Already kilogram. So EQ 10, 100 times 10 to minus 3, which is 10 to minus 2. I'm sorry, this should be 10 to minus 1, essentially 0 0.1 EQ per, per um Yeah, per kilogram. Okay. We actually don't really need that. We can do our convert that. Okay. Now, so that means you need to put, because this is a crunch flow unit. Units. So this will be essentially 0 0.1, right? So you specify the mineral volume fraction, KEQ. Um, but actually, okay, here I said, we need actually need a little bit of porosity. So let's say you have, um, we probably should say 95, 99.5% is water. So you actually porosity of nine, right? So actually I should put kaolin I being 100%, 1.0, meaning all the solid phase are the kaolinite. So, because this is seeing the total volume. Right, so um, I have the rest of it, they're all water. Um, and then, so your price is 0 .00, 0 0.995. And you have 100%, they're all um, on the solid phase. This is. Um, Volume fraction on solid, you only have kaolinite. That's what I mean. Okay, so that's the uh, condition. Hmm, okay, so I guess, do we need anything else? We have the dimension, let's just check it. Dimension, Venslow, uh, second species, primary species, and all that. So we should be okay. We don't have any, we don't need to do any time stepping. Let's try if it works. This will be less than 4.1 point in. Yeah. Oh, specified process is smaller than zero, let's see. Must be somewhere, something wrong in the input file. Okay, I'm sure. Let's see. All right, let's just try again. A lot of time, when we say, um, 
when it reports one error, it's not time, it's because something else is wrong. I wonder if this is because I have the open in the word format. So let me just copy everything. And open and open a notepad and, and see if it's because of that. And we're going to call it less than 4.1 again. Sorry. And we specify less than 4.1 in. Okay, depressed. Because I'm opening that. Alright, let's see. Let's try it again. Okay, I do have this just specified. Okay, let's see. I think it's still the original one. Yes. Okay, now it's in the Let's do this. Hmm. That's very interesting. Let me Oh the volume should probably let me just think about it. I might have forgot it. It does need to be the volume fraction of total, so then you can. Okay, I just realized that. Okay, so the original file was right. In it's it is a total volume. It's not the solid phase. Um, you can mistake with different type of information. Anyway, so okay, let's try. I think this that's the reason because I specified one here, and then I still have this. It was seeing porosity. I, I specified that was one kilonewton, so it will say porosity is smaller than one or equal to zero essentially. Okay, let's try it again. I believe that is an error. Nine runs. Okay, great. So you now see you you now see the process of doing this. Um, that I I also make mistakes and it takes time to debug and to realize what's wrong. Um, and in this case, actually, the what is wrong here, it is um, porosity. So it does point out to the right location. So the the lesson here is volume fraction on total volume system. So later on, if for example, if you have multiple minerals here, let's say you have you specific kaolinite, you specific calcite, another mineral, the volume fraction of the mineral and the volume fraction of the porosity needs to be um, add up to be 1.0. That's um, what you need to remember. Or the big uh, the batch reactor. 
Okay, so now we can look at the output file essentially. Um, let's see, look at, well, two files here for each because I specify two different times. But you can, can imagine that um, they should be the same. I can tell because uh, the R exchange reaction occurs really fast. It should be, it doesn't have time dimension. So it doesn't really matter if it's 100 minutes or it's 0.1 minutes because it reach equilibrium instantaneously. So if you compare this exchange one versus exchange two, they should have the same concentration essentially, right? Okay, so this is annoying. Let's just look at these two, right? So you have one and two. It's exactly the same. So this is the exchange output essentially specify in more per gram solid how much sodium on the surface, how much potassium, how much calcium, magnesium, strontium. And you can see from the list, the dominant species is sodium, and then followed by calcium. Both of these species are very high concentration in the uh, solution. Let's look at the input file again. Let's look at that, uh, sorry. Um, the table again. Right, so sodium and Calcium are the highest two concentration. Potassium have relative low. Magnesium, barium is in hundreds, and strontium have lowest concentration. Okay, so let's look at this again. So more or less, I mean, in here because of the huge difference in concentration, you end up the so sodium have the highest concentration, calcium have a second high, um, and then you have magnesium barium and strontium. So magnesium is a bit of higher than um, barium too. The last one is barium. Okay, so that's for the exchange side. And then if you look at the aqueous side, Let's look at total concentration. That give you how much is in the um, total concentration is not not in log units, right? So you have pH, you have CO two, sodium. Sodium go from actually it's now you think about it, the the, the output is all in, in more per kilogram water, so it's actually um, probably better if you use in input five milligram more per kilogram water so you can look at um, the differences um, between the output which is after the uh, reaction to before the reaction. So now you have sodium at 0.34 potassium this much and um, you actually can calculate for example so these are the concentrations right this is per kilogram of water so you know there's 300 uh, milliliter water. So this concentration times the volume of the water that give you the mass in the water phase. And for the exchange side, um, it give you in units of more per kilogram uh, per, per gram solid. And you can assume that um, we know that it's 0 0.005 of the total volume is killing. So you actually can calculate from the 300 milliliter times 0 0.005, which is 1.5 milliliter of kilonite. And so it's it's 1.5 centimeter cube of kilonite. You can convert that to gram of kilonite using the density of the kilonite give you the total exchange, um, 
the total uh, gram on the, uh, of the solid phase, and that you can convert to how much how, how much massing on the exchange side. So with that calculation, you essentially will be able to calculate how much for each species is in water, and how much is actually in the solid phase for each species percentage. So you know which one participate more actually. All right, so that's for aqueous phase and solid phase and all that. Um, and then, okay, so the second question for that is, um, let's go back. Second question is, when you do include these um, aqueous complexations, let's do that. I'm closing this, closing this. I'm going to add the second species, more species, right? So this you will be having all the OH species and uh, chloride species. So let's see. We have a ghost. Let's go through the list. You have sodium chloride, which is AQ because it doesn't have charge, and then you have could have NaOH. Q. Let's just go through each species, right? And then the sodium. You could have calcium chloride positive, calcium OH positive. Then you have potassium chloride Eq, um, and then CKOH Eq. Mg Mg OH plus B A C L plus B A O H plus oh sorry B A O H plus what else? Jonsium okay Jonsium C L plus OH plus. I always, when I input these, I always try to be very careful. And I probably mentioned you cannot use tab in the input file. You can also you cannot use comments on in the middle of the line. You should when you need a comment, you need to start a new line. Otherwise, it's it could get confused. So I typically to be more careful in terms when putting this input file because if you are not careful you end up spending more time debugging and all the frustration and all that so uh, keep things neat and be careful be careful when you input this that will minimize the chance of making mistake and all that I mentioned that before okay so then you can um, you can save the original output file to a different folder so you don't uh, otherwise because I rerun it it will be Overwrite the original file. Here, just for demonstration, I don't do that. So, um, if I run it again, it will surely um, make re overwrite everything. That's fine. Okay, second species input file not found in database. Let's see what happens. Hmm. We just run it and it works. So I must me I'm either made something some mistake or let's see. Second speed input file not found in database. I'm pretty sure that's not true. I'm sure there is a database for CO3. Let's search for CO3. Because it should be there because otherwise the previous run wouldn't finish, right? Okay, so it's there. So there's nothing wrong with the database. So it must be the input file. It's almost always our fault, as you can tell. Second species, 
just make sure everything is in um, Looks like there might be something wrong there because I couldn't go up. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of space there. And when it start lines, that space might be too long, so it couldn't. Okay. Let's just do it again. This is probably it, I think. So when you do this, I always look, man, okay, so you have this. Try to have not have too much space in between, otherwise the code cannot, cannot handle, handle it if it's too long. There's a certain character limit in each line that the, the code can process. Let's do it again. I think that's a problem. Lesson 4.1. Night runs. Okay, so it runs, and you can see from the date modifier is just the right time. So that means um, it's all the output file are, up, are updated. And if you look at the exchange, again, um, and compared to the previous one, if you save it, you will, so you will when you do homework, you will, will need to to save it, um, and compare and see how much difference does it make. All right, so um, we went through the output file, so I don't think I need to to do to to talk more. Um, what you will need to do is in each quest for the one without equispecialization, make a table um, for the more. For the mass fraction of each of aqueous phase and mass fraction of the solid phase um, on the exchange side, and then do that for each major cations, and then do it. The second question: When you do have these aqueous complexation, how much difference does it make? And this will be, um, and you can also check the specific concentration of the, all the aqueous species, and uh, to see which one is dominant and all that. And for this. If you want as all the dominant species, you don't need to specify open each exchange file and everything. You actually can just look at the output file, uh, less than 4.1 output file. Everything, all the contributions should be there. I use that output file other just for you to see what is in this output file. But in here, this part should have everything there. And this part might not give you the units, so you can actually dig into um, the exchange or exchange.out and this file to look if you forgot about units. For solid, it's more per gram. For aqueous, it's more per kilogram water. So it has all the different species. It also has all the exchange concentration. It also has all the aqueous concentration there. So you have everything you need. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, and you see me made the mistakes, um, and then we debug it. Uh, actually, in both time, the code point the right place that I made a mistake. The first one was porosity because I didn't put porosity right. Um, I put high kaolinite 1.0, so there's no room for porosity. And the second one is CO3 uh, minus minus, and there's too many blank um, space in front of that, so the code doesn't realize it. Anyway, so that's a two mistake. I mean, everything, uh, try to make it kind of no space, just do enter for each species, you'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to stop here, and um, you'll be working on the homework and everything. Um, have fun.